Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode of Creatives on Business. My name is Henry Marsh and again we are here chatting to another creative human being about how he has created a life and a career around the things that just inspire him and the passion that he had for it across from me. We've got Alexi Oso, Alexi Orange, Alexi Portocalas. I don't even know if I've said any of those words correctly. What's all, up, dude? All correct. What's happening, Henry? Lucky, man. Thanks, yeah. all, thanks for joining on the show today, dude. I'm excited um, to be here. We, we did a shoot a little while ago um, for Netflix, and I told you about this idea for the podcast, and you were like, dude, yeah. let me know. Yeah, I, like, I want to be on the show. I want to be on the show. Love me a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just said now that you've never been on a podcast before. Well, I've never been on a podcast as of my first time and I've always like thought oh it would be cool to be a guest on the show oh really <laughs> oh okay so I'm, I'm popping this cherry for you yeah it's, oh, but I have been on the radio but it was a community radio so okay yeah okay. For, and what I, did you and say for who for so it was Chai FM we did the so I don't know if you remember Miklas Manica yeah yeah yeah, yeah. name drop number one yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah drop it right there uh, <laughs> no we went to Israel we were invited by the Israeli embassy to go and just like cover street life in israel oh so, uh, but this was with um, was this with a camera company no yeah well we did we we basically then connected with leica okay and uh, everything was shot on a leica which was really 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 awesome Jeez, like, um wild. yeah it was it was amazing and like the whole experience but like the the, the big thing about the the trip was we said you know we don't want to get involved in any kind of like religious or any political or any yeah, debate yeah. like that we are just you know, photographers. <laughs> We're just witnessing life in Israel. Yeah. And um, they agreed, which was kind of interesting. And, yeah, and then when we came back, uh, we did, like, a few radio shows, and we did a few shows for... About something. the trip. Yeah, about the trip, yeah. And That's it was just, amazing. yeah, it was just incredible. I mean, like, Mick and I phone each other, when we're going on holiday. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like, we really just want to go back, and it's just, yeah, just having a camera and just, like, uh, ex experiencing life through the camera and people through a camera. Yeah. Uh, I would do that every day if I could. That's amazing. So, yeah. so for the people out there who don't know who Alexi is, who is Alexi? What do you do? Oh, it's a layered question. Yeah, yeah. you've got yeah. your finger in all kinds of pies, <laughs> yeah. man. So, um, I'm fortunate enough that my family run a business. Uh, they run a HR and recruitment business, mm -hmm. um, of which it's called APMC, and I've been there for the last 13 years. Uh, and uh, I always say that's, the, that's what feeds my family. Um, so, I've always uh, drawn an income from that. Uh, okay. But I, I absolutely love HR and recruitment. It's something that I love. I love people. And then um, I picked up an iPhone 4. I think it was no iPhone 4S. How old are you, Alexi? Come on. Uh, wait, oh, you don't know my age. Um, I'm 21. I just turned no, no. <laughs> nine. So this 36. was back when you were like 12. That you, yeah, yeah. You picked back up when I was 12, 4. I picked up an iPhone 4. No, um, I am 36 now. Okay. Um, married, two kids. Sorry, sorry, ladies, no joke. And guys. <laughs> no, maybe guys, no joke. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I picked up an iPhone 4S um, and a friend of mine, his name is James Munzer. Uh, he was Addy Rose back then on Instagram. He said, stop using uh, those rubbish filters and try out Instagram. And... Uh, from the and if you go on my feed, you'll see my first photo is his sneaker, yeah. uh, and we literally, you know, fell down this like photography rabbit hole uh, from there. So it was like, so if you ask me who am I, you know, uh, and I've obviously I don't like to define myself by what I do, but um, a very big part of me is a creative, um, as well as a person that loves people. And that's why, like, recruitment and HR is something that I love so much. And that's why also photography as an art form or as a creative form has, um, I've got so much passion for it. It's yeah. because you can't own a camera without loving people. Um, and I think, you know, I just, it's incredible how much you connect with people through a lens. And I think that's why photography as an art form has... Uh, just you know taken over my life how much of what you're doing at the moment is is hr and how much of it is is photographic or creative or otherwise so i find it i like to balance you know my life in a way okay mm. because um like i said the recruitment feeds my family but i didn't say you know but photography actually feeds my soul yeah um 
and now it's strange the the business is now taking over which you know is strange to me and uh you know every day i pinch myself going jeez i do this as a as a hustle it's like it's 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 my it's it's a very good income for me but i would almost say that a year ago i would have said 40 percent would be photography and 60 percent would be recruitment hr but i now definitely it's like 75 to 80 percent photography um and marketing and uh, you know, what's the rest you do? I'm not good at math. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, but like the, then I'd say 30% has gone to the recruitment in HR. Flip, okay. Yeah. So you, you started off with photography in, in terms of Instagram. Um, how did it snowball there? Because I remember when I first got into the Instagram thing, I don't know what it was at five or six years ago. Um, mm-hmm. you know, there was, yeah, you were six. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this 12 year old yeah, yeah. podcast right now. And, uh, I remember there was like a, there were a couple of names yourself, Alessio, uh, Gareth Pon, these guys, big names, big names in the Instagram, Instagram industry. You guys had like 30, 40 K followers. That's ridiculous. How man. did it, how did it get to that point? So it was mad because I think we were just lucky because we were there at the right place at the right time. Um, and uh, so, like I said, I got I had an iPhone 4S and my friend Roy Potrell. Oh, yeah, I don't Roy know if you Ranch. know Roy. Roy Ranch, yeah. So Roy was like, dude, come to an Insta walk, come to an Insta walk, come to an Insta walk. Um, this was going on for about six months because Roy was in, a lot more involved back then. I don't know if you remember. Mm-mm-mm. And um, Roy was like, please, dude, come, come, come. And I was like, oh, how lame. Bunch of nerds. No, this is exactly what I said. Ask James. Bunch of nerds with a phone running around taking photos like geeks and putting our uh, filters on it. So lame. Hashtag lame. Right? Anyway, so um, Roy finally convinced me. And uh, I absolutely loved it. And James was like, what's lame now man yeah. <laughs> you said you, you uh, I thought I was like oh, shut up man anyway but um, I, that first insta walk we went on we went to Maboning mm. and Gareth was there with Uncle Scrooge and Roy you know offense and Moise so those are like the three yeah name, name drop name boom boom name boom, boom. <laughs> um, and so like I really for some reason I really connected with Gareth um Gareth, is, I don't know, you know, Gareth is an amazing guy, like totally inspiring, so intelligent, so creative, but like he's also got, he's an intelligent creative, okay, which just totally blew my mind because Gareth at that time was doing some ridiculous, ridiculous shit with an iPhone. I mean, uh, you remember he had that perspective pie, he was doing all these stupid things and we're like, what the hell? Anyway, so I had to learn. And... During that time as well, James and I had this like Instagram competition. So James was like, let's see over this weekend who can get the most likes. <laughs> We're kids. I was 12. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember how old I was. Anyway, and um, we just like, so through that, because I don't know if you know, but at that time, Instagram was, you got heavy engagement, mm. a lot more engagement than yeah. you're getting now. And like, never before had something that I'd done creatively um, been gamified. So you know why Instagram does so well is because they built the gamification into that app. So there's likes and followers, which drives you to be more creative, drives you to to do more things. So at that time, you're getting this mad, mad um, engagement. And um, through that like little competition that uh, James did and like through meeting these inspiring people or through these Insta walks, it just like it it created this mad uh, creativity in in me at least, and I just like had to grow my feed, had to grow my following, had to like take photos all day every day. It was like a obsession. Instagram became life. Yeah, yeah, it, and it really did. And and the crazy thing is, it it stopped being about the photos mm. uh, about a year into my Instagram journey because then I realized the power of community in instagram when instagram was instagram not facebook um yes yes uh not to say that facebook have destroyed it but you know obviously they've they've created into a different machine yeah, but at that time it was purely community 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 
And like, I mean, I got to meet you. I got to meet Miklas, who's one of my best friends. I got to meet Gareth, one of my best friends. I got to meet, uh, you know, like Roy, Roy was a friend outside of Instagram, but like we built a very strong friendship over that. So, um, and then I met like hundreds, you know, thousands of other creatives through that. So like, and then what it really unlocked was this business around um, photography, which I had no idea because then because of this Instagram, I'm going to say this with a, a pinch of salt, this Instagram fame, because it's, you know, bullshit at the end of the day. Um, a lot of the brands were going, oh, wow, we like what you did there. Can you do it for us? And then this like this whole so so not only not only did it in uh, so it was three things it was like unlocked my creativity um, the limitations around an iPhone to create photos that's what really trained me to be a photographer no jokes because I mean that iPhone 4s lens was terrible mm. so you had to find all these magic ways to take these photos and edit and it was amazing okay so that's what taught me the creativity then it was like that community where. It just connected me to some of the most incredible people, some of the most incredible talents, some of the most incredible creatives who I, on a daily basis, connect with, like you. And then the third thing is that like that business stream where businesses were able to see me and make use of my my own abilities with the camera. Um, so Instagram is like it really did take over like a, a very big part of my life and. One last thing. Sorry, Henry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but also another amazing thing was that uh, for the first time in my life uh, as a creative, I wanted to leave my house. Now, uh, I used to illustrate. I used to draw. The thing about that is a very lonely hobby, as you know. Um, but, like, I wanted to leave my house. I wanted to meet people. It just, like, drove me into new experiences. Uh, and it's like, I'm a yes man. So it's like, no, I'm a yes, 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 man. Because of Instagram. Anyway. So that's it. Instagram's amazing. <laughs> so do you, do you say this to your wife as well? You just say yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, and everything. That's just because of Instagram. Yeah, 100%. No. <laughs> say yes because of happy wife, happy life. Henry, come on, man. <laughs> um, but now, so whilst, whilst you were on this journey now with Instagram, did you own an actual physical camera? Or was it always just the iPhone? It was iPhone until oh, yeah. 2015. Okay. So I did a job for... Um, uh, uh, what's a cell phone company? What was it? Um, I'll get you the name now. And uh, they they sent a phone from the states, and they said, "Can you create content for us for the next six months?" And they paid me in dollars. Six months. Six months. Wow. Um, and it's so funny. They had this crazy budget, <clears throat> um, and they were like, six months, go for it." And that whole project imploded. Uh, they didn't even release anything because it all just fell flat but they still paid us, which was incredible. Yeah. I'm not complaining. And um, thank you, Instagram. Uh, and uh, with that money, I bought my DSLR. It was, I literally took that money and I just put it into a full frame body. And everyone's like, why are you going full frame? And, and why are you buying good lenses? And I was like, because I see a future in this. So yeah. I invested a lot from day one. Um, and that was the best decision I could have made. I had the privilege to. I mean, it's not like I needed that money to pay rent or mm. I needed that money to, uh, because I did have an a, a, a income coming in, which, you know, it was my side hustle. But then yeah. I just took all that money and just plowed it right into my gear. And like I said, best decision I've ever made. So you, you were working as a full-time in the, in the HR thing and, and the photography thing with the, with the cell phone was completely on the side. Completely. I mean, I didn't see a business in that. I didn't see... If you asked me back then in 2012, Alexi, you're going to be a photographer in you know, so many years, I would have gone, you mad? <laughs> what? You know, photography, stupid. Don't even think about it. So, yeah. And uh, it just totally grew. You know, 2015, I saw, wow, I love this. And I want to get proper gear. And that's what I did. But lucky I said, I was fortunate enough to get the job from the States. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
yeah. But so it's taking you, I mean, so 2015, it's now 2020. It's taken you five years now where you're sort of like seeing a thing where you're almost doing this. I wouldn't say full time. I think you're obviously still doing the HR thing on, on this. I mm. want to say like you're doing the HR thing on the side now. It you're is. I, it is. I'm doing HR on the side. How you, crazy you is that? You came from a shoot. You're going to a shoot after yeah, this. Yeah, 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 um, we, we shoot together so often. I want to chat a little bit about though. We, we met on an Instagram walk, as you said, in, in Mamuneng. I was like, oh, it was Newtown or something. Mm. Yeah, you um, know, one of the Newtown Mabuneng. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, and I was like, oh, you're Alessio's friend. Like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just trying to be cool and hang out yeah, with all yeah. the cool kids. Yeah, because you know the Pretoria scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm Jobbik scene. Yeah. Pretoria, stay in Pretoria, not <laughs> 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 Yeah. And um, the next time I saw you was at Fashion Week. Mm, mm. And you guys are doing this really, really cool project. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so basically, um, again, through Instagram, um, I met... Uh, a group of film photographers um, shooting purely on foam, uh, 35 millimeter film. Um, and there was, so what, what I did is, so he actually emailed me through Instagram, this guy's name's Giles, and he emailed me through Instagram and he goes, dude, I want to start um, getting like young photographers like yourself uh, using film. You were uh, 12 at the time. Yeah. Yes, no, yeah, I was 13, 13 and a half, I think maybe. And I just, <laughs> yes, I am young. Yes. And um, what happened was he was like, let's meet for a beer. Uh, and I was like, all right, whatever. Um, we spent three hours together talking about cameras, film. It was awesome. Anyway, and um, he's like, I've got an idea. Uh, would you be willing to get involved? And, and he told me that he's got connections in South African Fashion Week. And he wanted to pitch an idea uh, where we shoot Fashion Week on one roll of film, process that roll of film that night, and display the images the next day. So basically, we were recreating um, the old journalist workflow, um, where the journalists would like take photos of you know something that was happening, would rush to the news uh, like to the star, get uh, they were at the star they had like three guys processing film, and then they would like print the images and they would like print the in the newspaper the next day. So mm. we were trying to recreate that madness. So we called it the overnight rush. Um, it was about five, six of us, and we shot. Um, we shot it uh, all on film. It was so stressful. I mean, you must think about it. We had thirty-one photos uh, that had to be gallery quality the next day. It was mad. It was mad. Okay, and um, I, I do think the first one we did when we saw you was uh, very amateur. You know, it wasn't phenomenal. But then we went the following year, and I think that was incredible because we actually did, we recreated, we got a bit more photographers, and then we did a gallery show at Cameras. Oh. Yeah, which was a great success. So, uh, very proud of that. Do you still shoot a lot of film? I do. I do love you? it. Yeah. When, when do you get out into film? Like. Oh, man. So... Yeah, it's all about, you know, I don't know, it slows you down and it's all about, you know, the process and um, I don't know if you mentioned it, but I have kids. So uh, I think th there's so much more value in my photographs when I shoot with film for my kids as well. Um, and it's like, okay, that's not the only reason why I do it, but I, I just love the quality of film. I love hearing that, like, shutter when you press it but like that cash shooter like an m6 so obviously it's uh, the best camera i own but it's like um you know hearing that shutter go click and just like waiting for those images to come and you know going to the you know rgb i, I develop all my all my films at rgb and you know just going there and having a chat to them about photography and like you know experiencing the community in that way um and then just getting these negatives back is just it's just magic, man. And like, have you ever printed a photo yeah. from a negative? Yeah. Seeing that photo float up in the water and like you see this image just appear on out of nowhere is, I don't know, there's nothing like it. Like it. Forget Harry Potter. That's just... That's the magic. That's dude, the real that's magic. That's the real magic. And then like when you see some, like a moment that you'll treasure forever just floating up through that water, there's nothing like it. And uh, it's funny because... I, my hard drive and laptop was stolen from me uh, two years ago and I had seven to eight months worth of photographs they were just gone 
but I've got all my film nicks. I didn't lose a single memory of my kids, which, yeah, it's just it's so magic to me. So there's, there's a few things I want to unpack there, but okay. so first, like, do you only do film photographs of your kids? Uh, I mean, I would, I would say 90% of my kids and family and 10% digital, and that would be mostly on an iPhone. Okay. But I do, I, do, I do have a lot of digital photos, but uh, the ones that really, you know, uh, and it's weird. Okay, now try imagine this. Try, you've only got 32 exposures in the roll, or 16, depending on what roll you buy. And it's kind of, whenever you take that shot, uh, it, it kind of, you remember it in your mind better. Because the process was that much stronger and that much slower that that image just imprints in your mind because you're thinking to yourself, I wonder what it's going to look like when I see it. Mm. So it, it not only gives you the memory on digital, I mean on, um, on a film roll, on a negative, but you also remember those moments better. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, there's something about it that, that you can't recreate with digital. Not to say that, I mean, I love digital. I mean, you know, I'd be r ridiculous to say that I prefer film to digital. I love digital, but you know, there's it's 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 a different medium, and the medium works um, on in different ways. Yeah. But you'll even see on my Instagram feed, I don't post as much as I used to, but my favorite photos are all on film, on my feed. So yeah. It's it's crazy. So my parents uh, my parents are quite old and so when they got married mm. their photographer actually never rocked up and it's so ridiculous now that you know what's like I don't know 50 years later or whatever it is um, maybe not, not as many as I think they had their 42nd year anniversary last year oh, wow. and so you know like 42 years later their son is, is, is a photographer in the, in, you know, in the wedding industry oh, and stuff like that awesome. but my uncle had taken a few photographs of my mom and I still see those like I still look through some of the wedding like you can't really call it a wedding album because there's like 10 photos yeah, yeah, yeah. and I often wonder to myself I mean, it's not uncommon for me to take like 4,000 photographs at a wedding. Today. Oh, easy, easy. And I never, I, I don't want to say I grew up not in the film, in, in, in the film days of, of photography, but mm. I also didn't grow up as a professional photographer taking no film ways. photos. No, 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 no. Um, I obviously grew up, you know, my school days, I mean, ca digital cameras weren't a thing, so you had the little point and shoot mm, disposable mm, cameras. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, but I often wonder to myself, like now these days, like what it would be like um, to be shooting film on like big events and stuff like that and you've spoken a lot now about how that how the whole process slows you down and you you become a hell of a lot more aware aware uh, awareness is a big thing 100 percent. yeah um so do you do you find i mean obviously film photography has influenced how you even take normal photographs even with your cell phone or, or digital for clients so so okay there's two things here so i would say number one never shoot an event with film if it's a paying gig because you'll be an idiot if you do, <laughs> unless they pay you mad money and like you're very good at it and you're confident that you can get the shots in 32 frames or whatever you've got. Um, but you know, like 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 you said, it, it is about slowing you down and it is about making you more aware. But you know, the the there is a lot of romance and also a lot of nonsense around film in that in that everyone's like, yeah, it's so romantic and it's so amazing and whatever. But um, Film is has a different um, purpose for different things. It's like a different paintbrush. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's it, like you might you use a pen right now in a notebook, but you won't use a paintbrush in your notebook. It's it's different for different things. Uh, I do think that every photographer needs to put it in their um, camera bag uh, as as a different tool. So I mean, if you are shooting four thousand photos, maybe it would be nice for like. 10 minutes to say, guys, I've got 32 shots. Do you quickly just want to slow it down? And I want to actually give these to you as like a thank you for letting me be your wedding photographer or something like that. Something stupid like that, right? But um, uh, yes, uh, it's just a different tool mm. and it's a different aesthetic. And it, it does make you love photography again. Because if you are shooting so much, it just brings that passion, that love, and that joy back when I think you need it. It's quite therapeutic. So, yeah. So, obviously, coming from the HR world, um, you've 
You are like by far the biggest hustler I've ever met in the whole entire world. <laughs> and, and clearly that's got something to do with growing up in a household with just HR people and you guys just deal with people all day long. And, and it's like networking and mm. communicating. Mm. And did, Were you always this way where you just hustled? Uh, I, think, uh, I think hustle is, uh, I think the, be- the right word is n- network. So I'm good at networking um, and connecting people because that's recruitment, right? Um, you need a receptionist. Hey, you're a receptionist. Go meet my friend. You know, you know what I'm saying. And then I give her the job. So I'm a very good connector, um, and a very good uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, very good with my networks. So uh, I wouldn't say the HR element did that, or the recruitment. Uh, I would say the recruitment element did that in how I've learned how to build networks and connect things. So now, because I've got a wide network, people would say, do you have a photographer? Do you have this? Do you have that? And then I was like, wait, I'm a photographer. I can help you with this. And I can, but my friend is better at this. Do you want to? So it, 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 the, the hustle, it, the, the, it's got quite a negative connotation because I'm selling, 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 and I'm just trying to screw you out of money. Uh, where do, do you really feel like that's the connotation? Yeah, yeah. And I've met a lot of hustlers. That are like, hey man, you know you want to buy this, and I've got this idea, and do you want to? And it's always like, it's a hard sell, man. Where it's rather like, you need this. I know someone who has the skills, or I have the skills. Let's partner up, mm. and let's make magic. Uh, and yeah, so it's you know it's a very fine line. And yeah, I I can say that I do hustle a lot, um, but I also like to connect. Um, connect, create, and uh, give people value. And that's, I think, w- why I have been successful. Does that make sense? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> but I think there's a lot more to it than that, um, Alex, because we've, we've had many a conversation where we had this conversation two weeks ago mm. when we did the shoot with, mm. with Netflix, and we were, we were having like a little mini rant about the industry and photographers and this and this could be painted across the board i think it's i think it's creatives as a whole mm. are so romanticized with the idea of keeping their art form to themselves oh, bullshit, yeah. and and you know i think when you're in the business of of photography and, and trying to make money from something that you love you you can't be picky and choosy about what yeah, you yeah, do 100%, 100%. we had the conversation where i literally told you i photographed carpets yeah and man, I did a, I did an eyebrow eyebrow video yesterday, <laughs> shooting a lady's uh, you know eyebrow lamination. I mean, and there's nothing glamorous about that. But what did you learn when you shot your uh, what do you call it, the carpets? It, there's so much that you learn because it's specifically it, to carpets. What one thing did you learn in that shoot? So specifically to carpets, so carpets, well, it depends on what kind of carpet you're photographing, but these were, these were giant Persian giant. carpets. I can't imagine how difficult it like, like four meters big kind of thing, right. you know, and they're square. Mm. So the most important thing is photographing them square. So you literally got to get a camera up high into the middle of the carpets and, and you're photographing. Did you have like a 40 meter ladder? <laughs> that, that's and like, a, like a ridiculous, like, and like I think I was shooting like a 35 mil because, you know, you want to shoot quite, you want to shoot quite tight. You want to shoot with like a 50 or a 70 because. Without you know, warping the Lines. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you just you just can't get high enough, and so for that, like it's it's just having that extreme patience to get the perfect angle. And and I can guarantee you, there must be about six photographers that would have gone, "I'm not going to shoot a carpet. That's like beneath me." And then they'd rather be hungry and uh, not work to take carpets. But you not only made money from it, well done, but you also learnt some valuable lessons about being a photographer and like valuable tricks and I mean lines are important so like you said carpets have to be straight do I use a 35 do I use a 50 do I use a 70 I mean those kind of like challenges made you a better photographer because you had to learn and find a problem find a solution for it and I find that photographers that are picky or um, you know Eric, oh no, I'm an artist and I'm not going to shoot a carpet well you won't really grow because you're pigeonholing yourself and in 40 years time you're going to be hungry and in an industry you don't want to be in because you want to go back to your photography. And I find that with a lot of photographers. So do you take every job that comes your way? Uh, every job. Every job. I mean, like I said, I shoot eyebrows, <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I absolutely love it because, um, you know, highlighting features on a face. How do I do that? 
um, what lights do I use to highlight features of a face, which is going to essentially make me a better portrait photographer, make me understand how light sculpts a face better, blah, 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 and doing a job for an eyebrow studio. I mean, yeah, I, I'll take everything because, um, and if people ask me, so what kind of a photographer are you? I can't answer that. Because um, I'm a hustler photographer now. <laughs> not the magazine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Maybe, maybe in the past. But no, I just, I just, I just find that I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a better photographer because I'm taking um, whatever jobs do come my way. And if I can't do it, I like to collaborate with photographers that can and uh, learn and grow. Um, I mean... There's so much work for all of us, all of us. Um, and also another problem that I'm finding is so many photographers are so scared in sharing ideas, sharing knowledge, sharing time, um, and just bringing photographers uh, onto projects with them. Uh, I mean, remember we were doing the Netflix thing and I was like, Henry, catch. I threw the camera at you and you're like, you know, and you're like what are you doing? And I'm like, come shoot. And you were like, but you're the photographer. And I was like, no, man, we, there's... You know, let's enjoy this together, you know? Um, and I, I, th I, think, I think Instagram taught me that. Um, don't take yourself too seriously. Um, artist, uh, the word is just so limiting. Um, and let's build this community out. And I think, uh, I think that's, that's, those are the valuable lessons that I think a lot of photographers, if you are starting your own business, just do. You know, if, I, I mean, people go, oh, I don't do events. Why? What's wrong with an event? An event will turn you into a very good street photographer because uh, you have to document moments. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, you got a point. You know? Oh, why? You shoot weddings, Henry? Weddings? You know? W wedding photographers, some of the best portrait and documentary photographers out there. Um, and I've seen your work just uh, get so, so much better since you've been taking one wedding, two wedding. How many weddings have you shot? Like thousands. Yeah, but I mean, man. you know, and, and, and you learn how to deal with difficult people. You learn how to deliver work under pressure with deadlines. Um, I, I can guarantee you the most difficult customer I've ever had is a bride and groom because they, it's their money and it's emotional. Mm. So what you learn is phenomenal. So I take it all the work that comes my way. I, I want to, again, like deconstruct a little bit of what you've been saying there because this, uh, so much of what you say is true. And, and this is why we get along so well mm. is because we sort of, I feel like we're cut from a similar cloth <laughs> in the sense that... It's been used too much. And, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, this isn't that kind of podcast, but um, <laughs> there's, there's so many guys out there that I feel are unwilling to share the knowledge and are unwilling to collaborate. Like, I mean, so the Netflix thing is a perfect ex mm. example of, of, mm. of how you are as a photographer and, and a creator and a creative mm. is you phone me up and you're like, hey, um, I've got this big job um, for Netflix, mm. which is not a small company. Mm. And you're like, I would really like you to come on and be the lighting tech for the mm. job. You, know, you, feel, you feel like your, your lighting is not where you want it to be. 100%. And, and you, you phone me up. Now, there's so many photographers who would be in my position who are, you know, I'm a, I'm a commercial, full time commercial photographer. I, I shoot campaigns and stuff mm. like that. There's so many photographers in my position who'd be like, no, why would I want to come and be your assistant? 100%. And, and rock a light, just like come and set up mm. lights for you. Mm. Why, why would mm. I want to do that? Mm. 100%. But the thing is that what we both understand is that from that opportunity where I'm assisting you, cool, now you throw a camera my way and I get to take some photographs, I'm able to use some photographs, oh, I meet the director of the show. 100%, who, who's going to be on the show, by who's, the way. Is also 100%, <laughs> yeah, he's really, really keen to be on the podcast. Mm. And, and so you sort of start to build a network of people who flip if they can't help you right now, like in two years' time, they're like, yes, there's that guy. So, so can I ask you, do you think that was a hustle? So what you did with me, was that a hustle? And, and that... And that's the question. So people go, people that think it's a hustle would never, ever come and assist me like you did. I, but people that think of it as uh, opportunity, a way to connect, and uh, an, a stepping stone to something amazing, now that's how you do it. 
to and me, you, I and feel, you got you get it. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. But to me, I feel like maybe our definitions of hustle are, are okay. slightly yeah, yeah, skewed yeah, 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 okay, because because okay. for me that is hustle. Mm, mm. Like for me, I I, I want to say like I hustled to to get to know you, mm. to become friends with you, mm. and to, for me to understand that you know Alexis actually opening opening up an incredible door here mm. for an opportunity like that to me is hustle i don't know that's why i said maybe our, our definitions for hustle is but is you did it because you wanted to absolutely you didn't do it because you saw money no but that, or, i mean that's what i said to you on the day as well it's like you know you don't even have to pay me to be here and 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 like one of the fundamentals around the hustle movement is money yeah right. and and also stature yeah money and stature and you like you, you those were the two things you didn't give a shit about you came in because you wanted to enjoy yourself. You wanted to create. You wanted to connect. You wanted to meet. It, like that is far greater and far greater value than any money or stature would ever get you. You weren't arrogant to go. My brand can't afford this. You know the yeah. Henry Marsh Incorporated. Um, no, I'm better than that. You know. No, you came in. You're like, right. Let's do this. Yeah. And yeah, you know, that that for me is. Uh, that that is my hustle uh, that is my street game yes you know that is my network and that's how i do it um through the eyebrow thing stupid example again i've met some amazing uh s- s- south african celebrities um that have now you know asked me alexi you know i'm an influencer in brackets whatever you want to call them and can you create images for me for my feed um and the answer is always yes you know and uh i could have said no to eyebrows but again look at where it's taking me so yeah but you, you're right maybe my definition of hustle but like um i've met too many hustlers mm. uh the salesy kind of people yeah can't stand them yeah and you know that 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 create an air of it's it's there's no authenticity mm. and i think the difference between you and them is you're authentic um and that's why we connected we didn't connect because at the insta meets you were just authentic um now i mean i saw you running around with a tamron lens remember that yes i think it was at that uh what was that? Photo ZA one. No, not photo ZA. Um, Explore ZA one. Yes, yes, and yes. I was like, what is that Tamron lens? And oh, I like, remember this. It was, we were up in the um, uh, elevator the there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were like, yeah, check it out. And you were like, check what this does. And no, oh, it's 2.8. And rah, rah, rah. and you're like, you know, we, we connected because you were authentic. You were enjoying what you were doing. You were, um, in, and you wanted to share with me. I check my new lens. You know, it wasn't like, hey, Alexioso, what's up? High five. Can we go for a drink? Can we go for... No, we, we, we connected over a mutual um, passion. And I think the hustler would have gone, hey, man, you know, DM me. What's your number? Can we connect? No, it was just natural. It was authentic. It was real. And I think that's the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, rant over. <laughs> um, for someone like yourself, I mean, you've mentioned a few times throughout this conversation your family, and, and family is like a big part of what you do. Yeah, yeah big part. Um, and you, you, have you seen any images of my family anywhere? I must be honest, I haven't. Yeah, I don't have like to share. Um, but but that, I mean, that's another topic. Yeah, it, it is. It is. I mean, we can briefly touch on the fact that you know I think social media has just democratized everything to such an extent um, that it's actually bad for for our personal lives. Mm, I mm. just just briefly digressing here for a short while is I have a friend of mine, Wade Flower Day. I actually photographed his wedding at the end of last year, and he's also a really really talented band photographer. And at the beginning of the year, he had a bit of a rant on Facebook to parents because first day of school, what they're doing, they're taking a photograph of their kid outside the school, posting it on Facebook. And you know, most of the times maybe their you profiles on, face on, now. <laughs> on, on, on private and that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and, he, and he's, what he said was so true because it's like, you now posting this photograph of your kid at school and y- your name is there. You're posting so much information that a, a predator of some kind now has enough information to go to that kid and be like, oh yeah, I know your parents, I know you, you know where you stay, all this kind of stuff to abduct your kids. And, it, and there's these kinds of things around photography and social media that, are, that become quite dangerous. Um, Can I also touch on that as please. well? So, so it's, you know, it's, and it's, that is a very big part of why I don't post online uh, of my family or my kids or anything like that. But also, I mean, remember that moment of my child's first day at school 
Um, I remember it. I don't need to go online and go, hey, guys, look at my kids first day at school. I mean, I, I don't need that uh, validation. Mm. Right. That's number one. And number two, the minute that I'm always thinking I've got to post and I've got to do it, you, you, there's, a, there's time that you need to take to do that. And it's time that you take away from that experience mm. with your family and with your kids. Um, the, you know, the nice thing about shooting uh, with film again, and I said I shoot film with my kids, is because I take one photo, I don't look at it, I don't share it with anyone, and I can't share it on my phone. So it's like I'm involved in moments with my family, and my phone is not in the way. Um, so I also find that a lot of people and I'm not hitting anyone that does share uh, family photos because it's also a nice beautiful thing you do want to share your family I mean maybe you've got like relatives overseas that you want to show how they're growing and stuff and I've got some advice rather start a private uh, Instagram profile and share photos there that's the best way you can get you know your family to view your, your photos but um, you know it, it takes you away from moments with your family and I'm very afraid of that because it did at one point in my Instagram journey um, I did get sucked into that uh, a phone, 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 phone the whole time. Um, and it's a scary place to be because then you want this validation. Um, you want this, um, you, 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 you derive a lot of happiness from the likes, who's commented, all of that stuff. And uh, I saw how unhealthy it was. So when I did have kids, uh, I said, that's not the life that I want with my kids. Um, were, 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 you, were having kids like the catalyst for you to, to no, change no, your no, perspective? No, 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 no. The, the, the catalyst was when the algorithm changed and we weren't getting the engagement we, what we used to see. I mean, we used to get like 1,300 likes without even blinking. Um, and now it's like dropped crazy. And you, you know what that does to your self esteem? You know what that does to your. Tell us, Alexi. Oh, man. <laughs> Henry, <laughs> please, can you just be, be here for me? No, because um, you just start doubting yourself as a photographer now. I mean, you, you're thinking to yourself, oh, here I am. I was the best. I'm the best. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm not the best. Oh, I'm not getting the engagement I used to get. What's wrong with me? Um, and it hurts. And uh, I mean, I can guarantee you uh, 90% of the guys that started then, guys and girls, sorry, I, I use that term uh, loosely. It's kind of like, um, went through this and uh, so when the algorithm changed that's when I kind of uh, you know thought wait something's wrong um, I'm I'm searching for way too much validation from Instagram um, I'm placing way too much happiness on a photo on a post and it really did stop me and go okay whoa reassess uh, and then w when I did have my kids I think I was well on my way to um, going, you know, I'm a, I'm a content creator, I'm a photographer, um, I'm not an Instagrammer. And that's when that shift changed. Yeah, thank And actually that algorithm change was actually probably one of the best things that could have happened to me, personally. Flip. That's yeah. so deep. Deep, bro, yeah. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And, and still to this day, I mean, I speak to some of the, the big names uh, and they're all like, yeah, man, it's different now, hey? And you're like, yeah, and, you know, it's, uh, am, I, am I that good? And, you know, it's just... And, and the, there's still those questions, but, um, you know, you just keep on creating. And I, yeah? Mm. No, 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 no. Is there still the same amount of community going on, though, do you think? Um, no. No, I think it's... I, I think because Instagram has become so monetized, um, it's not about connecting it's about um you know the, the monetary aspect of it and uh, this is why i really like to still go to the explore ZA meets because i think they're the only ones that are really still pushing insta meets um and it's nice that they're involving brands because at least that um they can get uh, some kind of monetary backing so that they can keep this thing going mm. um but n not like it used to i mean I, I, you know, Peter McKinnon, uh, that uh, YouTuber. YouTuber that we all like. Um, I think if I would have messaged him five years ago and said, hey man, amazing work, uh, uh, I think he would have uh, been able to uh, respond a bit easier back then than it is now um, because it's such a big machine and it's so much different. I do think, and, and what was nice was Instagram as a business, 
they built their business around community. Um, and when they sold the business, you did feel that, um, you know, okay, we've paid a billion rand for this, a billion dollars for this now. How are we going to make that money back? And it makes sense as a business. But Instagram was never about that. Instagram was community, community, community. Mm. They used to send us little books. Did you ever get one? I think I've, I've gotten the stickers. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> They used to send these like little books and in it was like, as you say, like Instagram community and they used to share like what the community has done and people within the community. Um, it was incredible. Um, those like hashtag uh, weekend projects was more about connecting us, mm -hmm. Instameets. I mean, they sent stickers for that Pretoria Instameet. Weren't you there? Yeah. That's, what, that's when I got stickers. Mm. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And that little bag. Yes. With stickers and, yeah. but, and the whole goal was to, was to give you a, a community pack. Yeah. You remember that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is that happening now? I, I must be honest. Hell no. no. Well, yeah. okay, maybe I'm so far away from it now that you're not, but, and, and that's why I say like, uh, you know, shout out to Keenan and uh, Matthew for keeping um, uh, Explore ZA going and guys, keep it going. But, you know, like Insta Meets need to carry on as lame as they sound as that word is now. I mean, it's just like the, 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 they're incredible and that's why I'll still go to them I'll still try and go to them okay, I haven't been to the last four because I've been busy but I'll still try and go and uh, connect with the community on that level it's amazing um, can I give you a story about how powerful that community please was? do uh, I was flying to New York uh, I think it was in 20, 2014 I think it was and uh, I sent a message to Omar uh, Omar, uh, actually Gareth. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I actually sent an SMS to Gareth. I said, Gareth, please connect me to someone in, in America. And then Omar was there. And then Omar was like, you know what? There's an, there's Iger's Chicago. Cause you remember, do you remember Iger's Josie? Yes. So Iger's was like the, it was, I don't know, that community there was built. And he was like, look, Iger's Josie Gareth is going to connect you with Iger's Chicago. Um, and then, and then I met the um, a person who was managing the community there. She's actually become a good friend of mine. And then uh, from there, she was like, "Go meet this guy in uh, New York." So when I flew to New York, I, I landed in New York. I booked myself in the hotel. Three hours later, I was at the top of a building uh, in New York because of the community that is built around Instagram. Name anything that had that same power today. There is nothing that has that same power. Um, n like, no one gets how, how powerful these communities were back then. I mean, like I said, Iger's Josie, Iger's Cape Town. And then it became, like, messy. Then it became, then there were all these other little communities, like, they were blossoming, and uh, all the communities started you know, fighting each other for, like, how do I say, um, popularity, and then it just all just fell to, fell to pieces. But um, still, that community is still there and still can be unlocked, but it's nothing... Nothing is like it. I mean, name one thing that you can do like that, that you'll be in a, a like on the roof. Uh, I'll, I've got the photos to show. <laughs> no, I believe you. I believe but it's, you. It's like. just incredible. Um, and uh, yeah, there's nothing like it. And that's why I love Instagram as a platform so much. So what do you feel creators can do like today, whether they're musicians or photographers or whatever? Like, how do we build that kind of community? You screwed. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Done, Give up. Just, uh, just, just uh, straight uh, if you're trying to make a living from art, just no. give up now. <laughs> no, um, I think that community is still there. Uh, and it's just being able to connect on a, a, a connect with, um, with your passion authentically, like we did. Um, so using the platform to really connect with people that share the same values as you, so connect on the platform with people that have the same skills as you and maybe you want to learn from them so like you know hey x y and z um love how you how, what you've done with that guitar you know i'd really really like to see what else you can do and just like connect connect on that basis go to events um you know it's it's, it's not just about uh, using an app to dm someone it's also just connecting at these events that do happen get out there meet people um and you know i still don't have a business card my business card is instagram uh, Alexia, how do I get hold of you? Alexia, so um, let's connect. And once I've 
connected through that platform, uh, you know, there you go. I've got your details. We can chat whenever we need to chat. And then once I, I want to, then I'll get your number and we'll chat through WhatsApp. But mm. um, uh, th- th- there's, th- there's no hard and fast way of doing it. But the I think the best way to do it is through common um, interests. And uh, it sounds like a dating app. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> crazy. He's not single. We we repeat. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like the common interests and um, uh, just you know c- connecting through the app as best you can um, and sharing. Uh, sharing is a is a big thing. Sharing your knowledge, sharing your art form, sharing your experiences, and then trying to find as many new experiences as you can through Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's incredible. Lexi, starting to wind down here a little bit. Um, if you had to look back now in the last, you know, um, five years from when you were 12 to now where you're 17, yeah. uh, <laughs> is there anything you would say to yourself, you know, from when you started the photographic journey in 2015, 2014, uh, you know, to do something differently? Would you, would you do something differently? Um, so I, th- I think, again, I'm going to open a bit of a can of worms, but being a creative I judge myself a lot. Uh, being a creative, I judge my work a lot. Um, and I think a lot of us do. I don't know about you. Um, but I would tell myself uh, to believe in yourself. Um, don't put so much pressure on yourself and just enjoy the moments. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's what I try to do every day. Um, now, uh, yes. I'm actually, on the one hand, I'm really happy that I do judge my work so much and I put so much pressure on myself. But on the other hand, um, I also need to find that balance. So telling the person back then is just like, you know, believe in yourself. Uh, You know, don't stop giving a shit what other people think and just keep posting. Um, (laughs) Rich coming from me. But um, yeah, that's that's, that's what I would uh, tell myself starting off and enjoy it. Um, a, a lot of people I see now don't. Don't know if you've noticed. I'll, I mean, I'll be honest. There's a certain degree of what I do at the moment. You know, I'm a full-time photographer. I photograph stuff every single day, and I think there's a certain part of me that doesn't enjoy it anymore as much as I used to. I've I think. never seen you not enjoy something. But the, but the thing is, there's. I, I once told Steve Castings, who we both know as well. I have an, an addiction problem with mm. with photography. I, I mm. just. It's why I photograph every single day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because yeah. when I feel like I'm not taking photographs, I feel like I'm not breathing almost. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but there's certain instances when you when you get onto a job and like, uh, I mean, shit's just hitting the fan left, right, and center, and you're just like, <laughs> and the rush that comes out of it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I mean, the, there's the rush afterwards, but it's like you know, you're there like hanging from the ceiling, photographing carpets, and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. There, there has to be a better way to do this, uh, man. Like. Uh, <laughs> Do, do, do you find that you're a problem solver? Oh, 100%. But I think, I think everybody in this industry, if, you, if you're making a successful, any creative field, you have to be. You have to be. A client comes to you, oh, we want to photograph a four meter big carpet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How are we going to do that? Yeah. Uh, YouTube. <laughs> I'm, I'm photographing a campaign tomorrow where, you know, and any photographer will tell you that if you're photographing outside, there's two times a day that you photograph. It's mm, early morning, morning late morning, in the evening. Yeah. Yeah. We're photographing campaign all day long outside. How do we make it work? Cool. Go rent a crap ton yeah, of gear yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll figure it out tomorrow. You have to, you have to be a problem solver. You mm. have to whatever and, and especially if, if you're like us where you're in the business of photography and not just the, the artistry of photography you're also having to deliver on a client's expectation so when you meet up with the client you're like yes I can do the job for you you need to figure out how to do the job um, mm-hmm. especially because we say yes to everything both of us Yeah, yeah. Um, I think cool if you're a photographer that just I don't know photographs bugs and insects you can be very very specific about how you do mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. Uh, but if you're saying yes to everything you, that's what makes it interesting and that's and that's part of the reason why we do it as well is because of, because of the interest I love it um, yeah. it's a, like you said it's a sickness it's this like mad sickness that we have that you just love it so much that I, I I said addiction, you know? but uh, I think if you're, co- you know, you're. Yeah, I'm, 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 uh, this is a sickness. Or well, my wife will say it's a sickness. <laughs> uh, I think there's something you need to get checked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. if you're getting if you're getting gangrene from this, you're not doing it correctly. 
<laughs> Which, I don't know, the gangrene is a fun part. <laughs> no, no, but makes yeah. me wonder how you've made it so far. Yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah. Well, that's why I still look seventeen. <laughs> I, I hope. No. Um, so, but like it's, it is like getting the right tools and throwing it at the problem. And I think, um, yeah, d- don't you find that? Uh, some of these uh, like blogs and podcasts can be a bit like misleading when they say it's not about the gear and it's not about 100% well I mean there, there is a certain aspect and this is I was trying to hammer this home earlier when, when you know I was like you know how long did it take you before you got a camera you were shooting so much on just an iPhone there is a certain degree of whatever creative field that you're in you know the best guitarist in the whole wide world can pick up a 200 rand guitarist and make it yeah, sound amazing yeah, you hand a, a, a 20,000 rand guitar to someone who's never played guitar before and, and they're, they're gone. And it'll be like godly. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like, r- 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 like and, w- and what I'm getting to is that like, I really, and I said it, I'm really happy that I bought the best gear hmm. um, because it really did, you know, give me an edge. And I, I, I really feel that, you know, there's a very big importance around getting good gear and um, and building building your 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 toolkit. Um, for example, if you had a, a s- simple strobe light uh, that you needed for tomorrow's shoot, yeah, and you rock up there and go, okay, let's go, you would have a lot of limitations mm. and you would struggle. Yes, you'd be able to get the same workout, but it would be very difficult. Mm. So, like, you know, I do find that it's you know it's not really fair that um, there's a lot of this uh, you know communication that goes out. I do feel that good tools, good gear. Uh, really helps you and makes it easier and helps you become a better problem solver hmm. and and really does I mean you know Gareth Pon, um he got the the Fuji the GFX um, and I was like why would you get a GFX and he was like well it was medium format and I really wanted to you know differentiate myself and it was very clever very good move um so yeah, there's the, there's 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 those kind of um, things that I believe in. I do I do agree with you. Um, I mean, well, especially if you're a photographer, and I've I've had this conversation before on the podcast. We have this crazy gear acquisition syndrome, where we always want the latest and greatest. But it is for a good reason because there is, as you say, there are certain limitations with the gear that you've got. Yeah, that if it can't do a certain activity or a certain uh, function. Then you can't do anything. You know? Yeah, I understand. Um, I mean, it's like a shutter, shutter speed at eight thousand. You know, like, and I was literally uh, thinking about the exact same thing. <laughs> I was thinking about high speed sync, but you know, yeah. like, I don't want to get into the technical details. But yes, I do think that good gear. Come on, gear, we can't become geeks. No, nah. <laughs> come on. I, I mean, <laughs> good gear Let's definitely geek out has its place. No. Yeah, it does. I, it I, genuinely I, does. I really, really, really feel that. And like when someone says to me, "Alexi, what gear should I buy?" I've only got X amount. I always say, "Save up a bit more." Yeah. And buy what you want. Yeah, I find, and you the same. Yeah, you very similar in that sense because I'm like, oh wow, you know, look at you going. Wow. But like, it's it's very much like yeah, just save until you can get what you want because everyone buys this gear, and then it lands up with this like, you know, this crop sensor that they don't want anymore. Yeah, uh, and they have to try and sell it. Then they've already lost a bit of money selling it. Then they have to buy something else. It's 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 not a good idea. And um, yeah. Lexi, for the people out there, where can they where can they find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at the moment. <laughs> I mean, I haven't really uh, branched out anywhere else, um, YouTube or anything like that. But uh, I mean, I run a lot of accounts at the moment. Um, fortunate enough to be able to run a lot of other accounts for other clients, um, so I'm not as active. But uh, you can find me on Alexioso, A L E X I O S O, on Instagram. And uh, yeah, if you want to hit me up, Alexi at alexioso.com nice okay. um, I'm happy to answer anyone's questions or if you've got any gear related questions or any photography related questions you know um, I'd love to answer them cool. I'd love to connect so last question for you mm-hmm. um, you have this microphone in front of you yes and Hello. if this microphone is attached to headsets that are on every single person on planet earth right now mm-hmm. what, what message would you want to leave with the world oh can we damn it really <laughs> <laughs> Um, throw yourself at every experience and enjoy the shit out of it and be authentic just like be real and just like enjoy it Um, you'll be surprised how much blessings you'll get out of that and you know I'm a firm believer in that so yeah have fun and just throw yourself 
and just enjoy every moment. Awesome. Alexi, thank you so much for being on the show, man. Thank you, Henry. I really appreciate it. And yeah. to everyone out there who's been listening and watching, thank you guys for joining in with another episode of Creatives on Business. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Yeah. Cheers.